Here is another plaster molding thing. These are Greek pillars or maybe ruins of some pillars with all these defects that they have. They're quite heavy so you can put them outside and perhaps, you know, build your own ancient ruins or something. So I made them in Fusion 360 and then created this molds that you can fold up around one of these. I tried with three and four sided ones and the four sided ones worked a bit better. You can reuse them as you see this is full of plaster. So you fold it up like this and make some plaster, mix it up, put it in, pour up to the top and after an hour you can open up your mold and if you don't use enough mold release you'll get these defects and perhaps this square bit on the top is quite easy to chip off as well but uh, that's part of the aesthetic perhaps. Here they are in my garden supporting some chili peppers. If you're interested how I made this column, I'll show you. This is the sketch I used to make the column. So this part is what you're interested in here. It's basically a straight line, then a line this way, and that's going to be the top there. But a column of this type is not straight, is it? So I added a spline between these two this and made it bulge out a little bit so something like that do you see and this is just half of the column and then the top and the bottom this this will become the foot of the column here with these circles and the top has something similar there these very thin rectangles here are to add some little cuts to the surface of the column. So you can see that the column outer surface is here and then there's an inner line that's just offset from this line. And when I'm extruding this or revolving it, I'm selecting these. Can I select multiple? So I'm selecting this, this, and if I could select that there, there. So I'm selecting this sort of area to revolve around so that this little cut here will form the sort of line between the different segments of the column. So if we go and revolve this, you see, we get this shapes up here and the foot of the column is also looking nice and these little thin rectangles form cuts around the segments and further I would then chamfer those segments a little bit to pronounce them a little bit more. Now what's this second shape for here on the on the right so I made an offset off from the surface of the, of the column here. So this shape, this sort of wedge shape, comes in inside of the column just a little bit and then peters off up here like this. Using this I made a knife sort of shape. Let me hide the column so you'll see. And let's get rid of the sketch as well. So I made this sort of shape that conforms to the outer skin of the column. So it's got the same curve here, but then it peters off on the top and the bottom. And I made it a little bit rounder. You see? It's really like a knife at this point. Uh, let's bring back the column, you'll see. So it's cutting into the column like that. What could this be? So I made about 15 of them, so they're all over now. Maybe if I turn on the light, 
lines here. Now, that doesn't help at all. <laughs> but you can see that it's cutting into the column. Uh, let's back, go back. And now, I use the Combine tool, which can subtract one shape from another. So it subtracts these 15 or so knife sort of shapes from the surface of the column. And that should create our grooves, do you see? So they're equally deep here along the surface of the column, or the trunk of the column, because they were offset from the skin. Their side profile was offset from the skin to go within the skin by a few millimeters. And here they start petering out, and because they were rounded, that gradual off-peter there turns into these nice archway sort of shapes. And something similar happens here in the bottom. Okay, so that's how I made the column. Oh wait, I made a square thing on top as well. There you are. Not sure if it conforms to any of the meet well, the, are they the ancient meters or are they the ancient orders of columns? All I remember there was three of those, right? Now to make the mold, I'll skip right to the end. I actually made three different ones. So here's the first idea for a mold. Just get a half circle or like a half square like this, like a sandwich shape. Hmm, that'd be a triangle, wouldn't it? And make two of these. That that was the first idea. Well, right away this didn't work. It's too hard to get a grooved column out of a half one hemisphere of a mold, I guess. You see, these grooves would just dig into this block of plastic, so you couldn't get it out. I, I gave up on this right away. So if you can't make it with hemispheres, do it with mm, one-third spheres. So this is a one-third of a revolution. So I made a, mm, it's hard to see, but it's, you know, it's 60 degrees opening here. And then it's copied over to the left and right after having subtracted the appropriate column shape out of that segment, that sector rather of the uh, mold. But no, I did try and print a few with this design, but after pouring the plaster in, it wouldn't come out, especially here in the top with this square bit. The corners would chip off inside here in the mold. I guess what you could do is cast the body of the column first and then worry with worry about the square later and just attach it on top. I'm sure that's how the ancient Greeks did it as well. That's probably why you have these segments to begin with. They're all separate pieces, aren't they? They're just stack on, stacked on top of each other, aren't they? And the final design is here. So this is now quarters of the revolution. So the 90 degree opening here. And I made 90 degree blocks and subtracted the column out of each of them. Connecting these blocks is a very thin piece here. It's just 0.2 millimeters here. So this would then fold over. And I did some smart uh, little flaps down here. This is not necessary, but these actually do end up interlocking and they help not help the plaster not leak out of the mold when you're pouring. And here's another flap here that's supposed to mate with the other side. This little groove here, this notch, is just so you can get in a screwdriver to leverage the mold open when it's cured. And these grooves here are so you can attach some strings or perhaps zip ties to tighten the thing when it's folded up. So it's not hard, just uh, make your shape and use the subtract command within the combine tool.